how to get your first virtual wholesaling deal in under 14 days. What is up guys? Zach in here, Rick in here. And in today's video, we are going to give you a full complete breakdown. If you are a beginner right now on how to get your first virtual wholesaling deal. Like if you're doing virtual wholesaling, I don't care where you're at in the entire world. You can get a wholesaling deal straight up. Okay. I'll tell you this. We had a, um, we went fishing in Mexico, mm -hmm. very kind of remote part of Mexico, right? Not too crazy, but, uh, there ain't much good in and out there, you know, just LT pretty much. We did some live streams out there and I can tell you, I did about five virtual wholesaling deals there with our team. And so if I can kind of do it in Mexico now, obviously, you know, I had the skills I have now with it. So it wasn't that difficult, but like you can really, if you're in a country that has decent enough internet, which I would say 95% of people watch. Honestly, if you can watch this video, your mm. internet's probably good enough yeah. to wholesale houses, right? And me doing that was just like, I mean, heck, if I can do it here, you can do it anywhere, right? Yeah, that wasn't like a big game changer for me, but we got people on these live streams. Like uh, I know Stan last week, I think it's Zimbabwe. And then uh, there's another one in um, South Africa. South Africa. We got a lot of people in Nigeria. We got a lot of people in Slovenia, Europe. So, Asia. Yeah. Virtuals worldwide now, man. It, it, it's everywhere. And, and so wholesaling real estate fundamentally used to be a thing in person. You just do it like right there. Right. But the truth is things have changed and you can do it all from your computer, all from your phone. And the only thing is you're going to have to change. And I want everybody watching this to understand this. The only thing you really need to change in virtual wholesaling is just the way you talk to the seller and maybe a little bit of the marketing. But really, the rest of it's pretty simple. And the dispo, you're going to change a little bit, little bit of stuff on there. So what I'm going to show you is exactly how to get your first deal in wholesaling real estate when you are doing virtual wholesaling and the right things to say. Guys, this is like a $5,000 virtual wholesaling webinar we're doing, right? Put you in a little hotel room and you know charge you four grand to go uh, listen to us. Like th This is the stuff we would put. And I want to give everybody a complete breakdown today on how to do it. So if you're excited, ready to go to learn how to do virtual wholesaling real estate, make sure you go out here and like that video. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Comment below your questions and we'd love to help you out in wholesaling real estate and help you become the best wholesale you possibly can be. So without further ado, let's get the intro going and let's break it all down step-by-step step, how to get your first virtual wholesaling deal. Woo! <laughs> the fuck out of bed bitch go get up get up and they got go up gotta wake up gotta wake up bitch get up get up get up get up, get up. snap <laughs> we're ready to go guys i love seeing everybody in the comments getting excited for this and so let's talk about this so let's talk about virtual wholesaling real estate and really the, i think the first thing we need to talk about is should you do local wholesaling real estate or virtual wholesaling real estate now if you're outside the united states virtual wholesaling is just what you got to do I, i'm just letting everybody know remember i do have a free wholesaling course freewholesaling.com i think everybody knows that but the real question here is okay in wholesaling real estate if I'm in somewhere in the United States, should I go local or should I go virtual? And so that's the first thing we need to talk about first. And then we got to break down exactly once you decide if you should go virtual or local, that's what you should do. And if you're doing local wholesaling, this is going to be a great video for you because you're going to have to deal with sellers. I want everybody to know this. If you're locally wholesaling, you're going to have to still virtually wholesale because you're going to deal with sellers that have a house in your local market, but they live out of state. Especially in Florida. Hint, hint, probates, right? Uh, and, and anywhere, right? And so the truth is you're going to have to learn how to do virtual wholesaling, especially when the seller is in another state or heck, another country we've done deals from, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to watch this video, even if you're not doing virtual wholesaling. So 
here's the question. Here's the everything, you know, everyone asks like, okay, Zach, I want to go out here. I got to figure out, should I do full-time virtual, full-time local? Which one's the thing? Which one should I do? And honestly, the only question you need to ask yourself, you know, first of all, should I do virtual or local? And, you know, you can go roast me about my handwriting. I, I know I got terrible handwriting. You should have been a doctor. But hey, I'm a doctor of wholesaling, <laughs> right? So should you go virtual or whole or local for wholesaling, right? The honest truth is you got to ask yourself this two-pronged step question, right? Step number one, right? Is your population, population, okay? Is it under 50,000 for your city or 100K for the county? right? Ask yourself that. Is it like any of these two? If it is under 50,000, I would consider virtual wholesaling. The reason why I'll tell you to consider that starting out is because unfortunately, just how the way populations work, more people that are living in a place, the higher demand it is for flippers and landlords, right? Mm -hmm. This is why it's harder to sell a house when there's a thousand people living in there and there's no grocery store 16 miles, like you got to go 16 miles to go to a grocery store. That's why those prices are actually way lower. They're less desirable and they're actually harder and they sit on the market a lot lower. Now, if I'm in Dallas and I'm kind of in the city of Dallas, it's actually pretty easy to sell a deal there, right? Now, mm -hmm. there's obviously areas that are good or not bad, but like if you have a lower population, it's going to be harder to find cash buyers and that makes it very difficult, right? Now, on top of that too, when you're going out here and you got you to think of the next part here, it's like, okay, population's important. But there's also one more factor, right? Like, oh, I just go to LA. You know, I live in LA. This is perfect, right? Unfortunately, price, okay? Price is going to be what we call the average price per house, right? Literally, I, I, I did a uh, AI video. You can go literally look on a Tuesday on it, right? And I'll show you what they just search median home price on Zillow for the city you're talking about where you live. And it will tell you exactly if it's good or bad, right? I would say as of this video, if your average median price point is 400K or below, you are going to be good. Do local. But if it's over that, go virtual. Okay. So that's that the first truth we got to talk about. All right. Like if your median home price, so the Goldilocks zone is if we can get over that 100K for the county, that's a great market. And if it's 400K and below, that's a great market. So you might ask yourself, oh, no, Zach, I'm in Miami. Let's say, uh, let's say Miami's kind of on the bubble. Let's say I'm in New York City where it's 700K and there's 5 million people. Unfortunately, you already hit one of them where you just can't do it. And so now I have to go virtual. And so here's the next question, right? Here's the most common one. What market should I choose? What virtual market? Look, I just told you what it was, right? It's the same criteria to see if you have a good market for your own business, right? Yeah. It's what's, the, straightforward. what's the population mm -hmm. and what's the median home price? Yeah. Literally, there. I, I did the math. I think there's over, I think, 300 counties, I believe, where the population is over 100,000, the median home price is below 400,000. Uh -huh. You can ask AI to do all these things, right? And it'll break it all down for you. This is why it's very, very important for you guys to figure this stuff out. This is why when you're looking at if you should do a virtual wholesaling market or a local wholesaling market, like which one you should do, my honest opinion, if it's not in these criteria, go virtual. And when you want to go find a market, pick any market like this. You can actually look at data and all the other stuff for that. And that's really going to help you out really, really well. And so that's the truth. So when we are starting out in wholesaling real estate, when we're going out here and we got to figure out, should I go virtual, local, where I should do everything, it's going to be all about what market you're going to do. And that is the very important part here. Right. And that's it. Right. I, I get everyone like, Oh, but I'm in, you know, I see a comment here. I know I'm in Dallas. It's super competitive. Good. Like, right. Like yeah. good. It's competitive. There's a lot of cash buyers and there's a lot of people making millions of dollars in Dallas. The one thing I want everybody to know, if you're in a market or you go into a market and think there's people like your mindset is probably gonna be the most important part. And if you're in the mindset that it's a very saturated market, you're screwed. You're already screwed. I, I want you like I want you to understand you are already screwed at this point. Yeah, because most of you guys, you either got word through some sort of social media, 
or maybe you had one or two deals where you had competition and you've decided your entire market is now saturated. And honestly, if that's what you believe, I guarantee you're going to fulfill it. So you got to start looking at like the data you look at. Me and him are in like a ridiculously saturated market. We don't care. It just means you got to step your game up and you've, you've got to help people in a lightning speed fashion. So, but with the competition comes more cash buyers, more inventory, more opportunity. The minute you say your market's saturated, you're done. Now, the really cool part is if you're in one of these very high price market, it doesn't mean only do virtual. You can always do local markets, but it's going to be hard to do three, five, seven deals a month in say like San Francisco, Manhattan, or downtown Miami. Now, when an opportunity comes up, you already know the market. If you're prepared and you already got experience through your virtual market, that's going to allow you to do both markets. One's going to be opportunistic. The other ones, you're going to have to treat it like a conveyor belt and keep it going and going. And with that, you're going to get a ton of experience. And just remember, if a, if a market's saturated, there's a reason why it's saturated, because it works. Exactly. Right? So and, we keep talking about how negative it is for a saturated market. There are negatives to it, obviously, yeah. but- Honestly, the way I try, I try to find markets that are sat that are not saturated. Like when I'm trying to get into a market, because I don't like other wholesalers being in there. But that's a very niched out thing. If you're in a local market, it's still there's pros and cons to a saturation, right? And so I did virtual wholesaling. I figured out this little city where not a lot of people were wholesaling, but it actually worked out really, really stinking well. And it was Knoxville, Tennessee. Nobody was really wholesaling there too much, yeah. right? Like, but and there's a ton yeah. of deals. Now it is though, right? And so you got to figure out markets that have a lot of deals, but there's also not a ton of wholesalers because that's just an unfair advantage. Now, if I go to Atlanta, I don't really have an unfair advantage, right? I'm going to make a ton of money there, but I don't have this unfair advantage where if I spend 10 grand, I'm probably going to get a hundred K in deals. Mm -hmm. If I spend 10 grand, I'll probably get a hundred K in deals in Atlanta. If I spent 10 grand in Knoxville, I'll probably get $150,000 in deals. That's the little arbitrage that works a lot better for me. And, and then obviously word comes out, the, the market works a lot better. Uh, it, it's crazy. So here's the question now. How do I find my first deal in virtual wholesaling real estate? Not a lot of time. I got to do it quick. What's the thing to do? You have to understand one simple equation. There's one easy, simple equation that will change your mind forever about getting a wholesaling deal. So what is a wholesaling deal? All right. A wholesaling deal to find one, it's one equation. Okay. I'm like Albert Einstein with my one equation to do all this. Okay. I figure this all out. It's, it's fascinating the way you look at it, but finding a wholesaling deal comes down to two things. And when everybody comes to me and says, Zach, I can't find a deal. It's so difficult to find a deal. Finding wholesaling deals is just so hard and stressful and I just can't do it. And it's so, oh, it's the worst. I just can't find deals. I, I, I shut a lot of people up and say, hey, let me ask you two questions. And this is the equation for it, okay? Finding a wholesaling deal. And if you, have a, if you haven't had a wholesaling deal and you're struggling right now, this is the equation for you. How much volume have you put down on your marketing? It's all about volume. Now, that's, that's the first part. How much volume? How many calls? How many texts? How much direct mail? How many reverse drawing for dollars leads are you doing? Like, it's all about volume, right? That's first and foremost. But here's the problem. I get a lot of people that say, oh, I did 10,000 calls. Volume's not going to be the only thing that leads to success, okay? You can do a million calls. And if you do a million calls of realtors, you're not really going to get a deal. Mm -hmm. It's volume times quality, all right? I know it's a really simple thing to think about, but when you keep this really simple, it changes it out. And the cool part about volume and quality, I want you guys to understand that it's interchangeable. What, about, what do I mean by this? If you have a lack of volume, so if you are not able to do a lot of volume, all you got to do is just bump up the quality of your lists. So you only have two hours, maybe let's call it an hour a day for marketing. Obviously, you don't have much volume you can do, right? You can't pump out a ton yeah. of leads. But if you co-call for an hour a day of probates, which is really high, high quality, you have a pretty good chance of getting a deal. Now, on top of that, let's say that you can't really get the best quality leads, right? Like you don't have all this time to go out here and you don't want to do all the crazy quality leads. 
all you have to do is just bump up the volume yep. and a bunch of volume will punch out a bunch of deals. So for example, like, so let's talk about doing wholesaling deals. It's a, it's actually a really stupid, simple equation. Okay. How much are you going to make this month? Okay. So all I can do in virtual wholesaling, I can calculate this in our own business. This is really easy. Okay. My virtual wholesaling business. Okay. Wholesale biz. All right. If I have to calculate what I'm going to do, all I have to do is do this equation. This is really simple. All right. That's why I just, it's a plug and play thing. This is why I love this so much. If I want to see how much money I'm going to make cold calling probates, I know pretty much four or 500 probate leads is going to land me a pretty big deal, right? For virtual wholesaling, right? I'll say 35K in a virtual wholesaling market, right? And so that means if I have probates as the plug in here, right? This is for our market, our systems, right? And I'm going to pop in, let's say a thousand calls is my volume. That's probably going to lead me to about 70K in deals, right? Now, and then let's add the probate mailers too. Let's call that about 70K in deals, right? That works pretty good. Now, unfortunately, let's say we change this though, okay? Let's say we change this list to vacants. I'll tell you right now, there's probably about a 30% chance of a $15,000 deal. Right, mm -hmm. because it's it, on average it takes about three to four thousand direct mail pieces and calls to get a ver vacant uh, deal when it comes to virtual wholesaling. And so when we plug and play here, and we're trying to understand how do I get my first virtual wholesaling deal, you got to ask yourself, what quality list am I going to pull, and how much volume am I going to do on that? This is all marketing is all about. How much volume am I going to do to get a deal? And how good of a quality list are we going to get? That's all you have to ask yourself, right? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's simple. A lot of people overcomplicate it. Yeah. Volume cures a lot. But, you know, if you're just going to make 5,000 realtor phone calls, there's much better lists to do. So you have to become a master at creating your list and we, we teach you we go into depth on this all at freewholesaling.com government list driving for dollars you guys know the routine if you can get the quantity up on those it'll cure a lot of your problems i all the time like someone will say hey you know rick i'm struggling to get a deal i'm like well how many people did you call today uh, 20 I'm like dude just quit it'd be easier the you know, the reality is you don't want it bad enough because you're going to have to have a ton of quantity. Listen, guys, we're only looking for a tiny percentage of people. Most of you guys are spending your time trying to negotiate with retail sellers, and you're literally wasting your time. The reason you comb through Zillow's and realtors is you're looking for someone that's got a problematic property or a seller that needs help. But most of those don't go to retail. Now, some of them are hidden in there. Don't get me wrong. And when I talk about volume on those, you need like extraordinary amounts of volume. Yeah. But if, if you go with code violations, all the government lists we teach you, you just need healthy volume. And here's how you get volume. You're just consistent. It's not making 10,000 calls in one day. Yeah. It's about making those calls every day and go have a 30 day goal. How many calls you're going to make? Then you can do some damage. But if you're going to make 20, 30 calls and then come on here and like complain about it, I can't help you. Zach can't help you. You have to become extremely consistent. You're going to have to toughen yourself up because it's the truth of what it takes to get a wholesaling deal. And guys, this was the same thing I had to deal back with in 2003 and 2004. It has not changed. Technology's changed. More people are educated about this, but you still have to put in that effort and that's never going to be replaced. There's no AI. There's no software that's just going to take the volume game out of it for you so don't ever forget it yeah and, and you know this is about how to get your first deal but like when we look at our business right i can't so if i want to make a million dollars a month theoretically i can just pull like a hundred thousand probates in my own market it, 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 there's not a hundred thousand probates not, in my yeah, market i'm not gonna get it so the because i can't get the quality i have to pump up the volume vacants high equity things like that and so that's what we're talking about now let's get in the marketing side right like we got no money we want to get some deals right Virtual wholesaling marketing, right? What do we do here? Honestly, it's actually a pretty simple equation. It all comes down to lists, right? And marketing channels. 
That's it. And I've said this a million times in this business and for wholesaling real estate in this business, but list and marketing channels is all what marketing is about. Okay. It is the rod and reel. Uh, sorry. It's the, it's the bait and the rod and reel of fishing, right? You can have the best bait in the world, but if you have a terrible rod, it's going to snap in half. You might have the best rod in the world, but if you have no bait, no one's going to go bite it. Right. You got to get a bite first, man. Yeah. So th that's the point. You have to have both of them have to be good. One can't be amazing and one can't suck. They have to be both really good. And it's all about the quality of the list too. So there's three types of lists out here I, I've always recommended, okay? There's what I call government lists, right? And then these are basically, let's talk about lists really quick, okay? Really, there, there's the government lists, which are going to be, you know, the code violations, to be probates, tax liens. Oops, and just do liens in general, right? You do the arrest record list. I'm trying to do this: the arrest list, evictions, eviction. Like I can go on and on, you know. Fire damage. I, I so water you just, shut off. You just go to freeholsling.com. There are so many of them. Yeah. So I'm gonna put this right here. There's a reason we recommend these lists because they actually work. And so. Here's the thing. You can get government lists. That, that, that's the first and foremost one. On top of that too, I used to call them free lists. Like I used to just call them free lists, but they're called government lists now. Unfortunately, there's a lot of these companies popping up everywhere that are quote, you know, free list softwares and the data just sucks. Okay. I can tell you right now, if you're going to a provider that gives you free data, it sucks. Okay. So for example, there, there's places out here that, you go to a website and they'll give you the probate list. All right. The, I'll call it a quote probate list from a free software. Mm -hmm. I've tested it out. I've pulled the actual probates in my city and the, and the probates they've had. They were old, outdated, and the list sucked. Do you know why? Because when you skimp on data because you're giving it out for free and you don't want to drop the amount of money that it actually takes to do it, your data is going to suck. For example, why do you think props, stream, and batch they drop millions of dollars mm -hmm. every single year. And I'll be close to about a million dollars every single month. Like a huge portion of the revenue. They, the reason why they charge is because they use pretty much a lot of that money to get in the best data possible. And when you're, when you cheap out on it, guess what happens? The data sucks. And you know who gets hurt? You. That is why. Like the reason why I tell you this is because if you go do a prop stream list and then you go like a free list thing and you get the free list thing, and you use the same skip tracing, your skip tracing is only as good as the list you get. And if your list really sucks, that $99 you saved this month on PropStream is null and void because you spent probably $1,000 on terrible data that you have to throw away. It's Guys, it comes down to volume and quality. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's the time you put into it. So I, I've, been, I've been doing lists for 21 years, and I'm here to tell you, even when I switched from list source to prop stream, I waited a year and a half until like even paying a year and a half to, and by the way, prop stream was substantially cheaper and it was much more robust. But remember if I do direct mail or I do cold calling my, my cost of mailing the skip trace, plus all the time and energy I put in it. If you skimp on the list and say, Oh, I got this free. It's not free. It's going to cost you an absolute fortune because you got to redo everything all over and it gets really expensive. Honestly, guys, the data is like the cheapest part, but I only use data I 100% trust and I've personally gotten deals from. Technically, you can get a deal from like anyone's data, but we talked about these probate services. When I first started probates, it sounded so perfect. Someone was going to hand deliver in my inbox all the leads, do everything for me. I never got one stinking deal out of it. I was paying $350 a month just for one county. Now, here's the exception. On the government list, if you can get them direct from the source, it is phenomenal. It's technically not free because you got to put a lot of time and energy into it. You have to earn the list. You're going to have to earn that list. But I'm just telling you guys, if you go and get free data, if you think you saved 99 bucks by doing it, if you spend 30, 50, 60 hours cold calling, spend thousands on mailing, and even texting and skip tracing, you find out the list is not really that great. It's going to, the $99 is going to be, it's going to cost you thousands. So yeah. I'm just telling you, 
only use trusted sources that have years in the business because data is extremely important. And if you screw the data up, I don't care how much volume you do. It's not going well, to make up say for one bad thing. data. This is a really important part. Okay. Yeah. When you go and talk to big wholesalers that do a lot of deals, right? Mm -hmm. They use the best of the best list providers, right? And when you talk to the top people that get the best data, like that, and they have YouTube channels and all these things, right? Some, you know, they, they sell courses and stuff, but like they still run hundred K a month businesses that make millions of dollars every single year. There, there's like these free softwares that not one person making over hundred K a month in wholesaling promotes them or they don't talk about it. You know why? Why? Because they've all tried it behind the scenes and they all suck and they never talk about it. That is why I get asked all the time. Should, should I do this free software that will pull the list yeah. for me and it's all free? There's not one person that's a seven-figure wholesaler that talks about that. You know why? Because it sucks. Absolutely sucks. Okay? I get people you know, try to tell me, should I use this insert trash name skip tracing company that's owned by a guru? And I'm like, um, does no other person you – like, does any big wholesaler ever talk about that they use? No, never. Yeah. You know why? Because they've all used it. Guys, I've tried the free whole, wholesaling software. It sucks so bad that I hate for you to guys be like, okay, it's, it's free. I'm going to go use it. Come back to me and you say, I use this. Oh, uh, why isn't it working? I get it all the time because yeah. your data sucks. Guys, when I talk about quality and volume, when you skimp out on quality of your list, when you're going to go pay for a list, it sucks. Like you're going to, it, it drives me crazy. But Guys, don't skimp out on quality for 99 bucks. If you have no money, get a list you have to earn. And so the one thing I, I want you guys to understand when I say this, the, the reason why I say this is the quality of a list, all right? The quality of a list is directly in proportion is equal to how hard it is to get. I want you to understand that. It's not about how much money you spend on it, okay? It, this is the important part. It's not how much money you spent getting the list. It's how hard it is to get that list. Very important. When I'm an average Joe wholesaler and I can go pull the vacant property list by just paying for prop stream or batch, yeah, it, it's it's a, not as big of a quality as a probate list because it's harder to get a probate list than a vacant list. That means there's less saturation with that type of list. And there's more motivation. And so that's why it's really important when you get this. And so when I say using a free software, when you compare it, it, it it's insane. And so the quality of list is in proportion to how hard is it to get the list to. And it, it depends how good the quality it is. And so where are the other type of list outside of government lists you can pull, right? There's really only two others. There's the other ones which are called the paid lists, right? These are the software providers that spend millions of dollars paying for this information, right? They have the vacants. They have high equity, which is pretty good, right? They have a bunch of other decent ones. You know, one thing I really like is you can actually stack them pretty easy. So I can kind of mix high equity. I can mix duplexes only, stuff like that. It works very, very well. And so a lot of paid lists, they're, they're kind of under the list REI.com one and then the Zach data. If you don't have the money for it, don't do it. Go back to government lists. I tell everyone, okay? Go back to it. This is kind of more of a volume game, right? But some people have to do it, so I completely get it. Really, I would say if you're getting an SMS or you're using a dialer, I'd probably use the paid list provider on there, but it, it's definitely changed. And the last one, the utmost number one quality list you can possibly get is what we call earned lists. Okay, these are called earned lists. These are lists you have to earn. You can't go out here and you know pay somebody for it or click a button to get it. Like you gotta actually go out here and get it, right? This is gonna be your reverse drying for dollars and your drying for dollars. These are earn lists. You have to earn them. You, you, you can't go out here and, and cry about it and you know ask for it. It doesn't work like that. You have to go out here and do that. On top of that, too, this can be a door knocking list too of just ugly houses. And that works pretty well too, right? You can just door knock them. But these are earn lists, right? You yeah, got to go I earn mean, it. It's, uh, listen, you guys you know what I say. You're going to get resistance. 
How do you beat resistance? You just overcome it with persistence. And persistence is about not taking no for an answer and just keep continuing the conversation. Um, I think me and Zach are the only ones in the wholesaling industry that teaches you how to get these lists. Now, I know there's a lot of traffic going towards these lists. But it's because they work. So we're talking about saturation, a lot of people chasing on the list. If you go over to freewholesaling.com, we teach you in depth. And I'll say I've, I've done a ton of videos on this. You just got to learn your rapport and conversation skills and use this when getting these earned lists. And if you do it, the harder the list is, the better off for you. Because if you can overcome it and do it, there's not many people that are going to make that kind of effort or initiative to get it done. So you might as well just get the hard work out of the way. Earn lists. Don't overlook it. And you're like, well, you know, Rick, they're free. No, they ain't free. You are going to earn them. Like, honestly, it would be cheaper, in essence, to pay for it because the time and energy you're going to have to do to get that list, that's why they're so valuable. And you got to understand, the easier somebody hands you the list, the more I'm like, I just assume 500,000 other people are looking at the same list. So if you go out with these earn lists, they're phenomenal. If you use some of the trusted paid sources, but remember, we never recommend something until we've gotten tons of deals off it and we verified everything. And by the way, I've tried so many services and I constantly testing them out. I'll let you know when one pops off. And I got to tell you, there's, there's, there's clear front runners. So the, the ones we recommend are the ones that we do. And if I change, I'll be the first one to raise my hand. I'm always open to something better, but I don't want someone just to come in and go, Oh, Hey, I just want to grab market share. Hey, take this list because I'm going to have to test that list. So if you're going to do that list, I would split test it. So pull the same list. You're going to pull off prop stream or batch and run it from there. Yeah, exactly. And so the question might begin like, wait, Zach, how do I reverse drive for dollars virtually? This is a virtual wholesaling video, uh -oh. right? Uh Oh guys, there's a reason why I mentioned earn list. You can still do earn list virtually, right? So let's get into some channels, right? So how do I do reverse drawing for dollars? That's the first question, right? You're going, you, you obviously can't do it yourself. You know, <clears throat> everybody knows that, but you can find someone that can. And this is a big secret, right? This is huge secrets that nobody talks about in this business. But if you go out here and reach out to people in the comments of videos like this, you can go out here and comment on Facebook groups. You can DM people and just look for somebody that maybe they can reverse drive for dollars for you, but they don't want to call. There's a lot of people that don't want to cold call. They hate cold calling with a passion. And they let's say they only have five hours a week for marketing and they hate cold calling. They will reverse drive for dollars all day. You know, they, they live in like, let's say Chattanooga and you're in, uh, you know, I don't know, Finland. You can go find them. And guess what happens? If you find 10 of these people, guess what happens? You agree to split it 50, 50. That means you have, so, you have 50 hours a week of people reverse drawing for dollars for you going to your phone number. That's pretty gangster, right? Your phone. Now, obviously you have to split the deals, but if you have 50 people doing that, a 10 people doing 50 hours a week, that's a really good arbitrage, right? And so that's why I tell everybody network in the comments. Go out here and let people know who you are, where you're at, what your virtual market is. And if you have anybody that wants to drive for dollars with you, just split it 50-50. It's amazing. They literally just put the sticky note out. That's all they do. And then you close the deal, you do it all, and you split the deal 50-50, but they're doing work that you can't get. Same thing with drawing for dollars, right? Mm -hmm. It's a powerful tool. And it's all about, it's technically JVing, but nobody ever talks about this. If I can connect virtual wholesalers outside the United States, with people who are inside the United States that are beginners that need somebody to go kind of do a lot of the cold calling and the harder work for them that they don't want to do. It's amazing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's actually brilliant. It works. I'm telling you, it works really, really stinking well. On top of that too, when you're doing virtual wholesaling, right? Cold calling is probably going to be the biggest one, right? A lot of people have this negative connotation of cold calling. You know, you can call it, you know, seller outreach, if you really want to change the name for it, I think it has a bad connotation. I, I really do. People are cold calling, they flip out. But if I call it seller outreach, you guys don't get stressed out. So it's like, call it whatever you want in your head. But I'm telling you, cold calling is still the best thing. We are not changing labels on this show. No, but I'm just saying, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> but like, here's the thing. A guru is going to say, oh, you should do seller outreach method. 
It's just cold calling, but they changed the name. It makes you feel better, right? Whatever you want, right? On top of that too, SMS is a really good platform too. Uh, you can do it actually just on your own phone if you want, right? I'll tell you 50 texts a day. Even if you have no money, you can still do it for free. And now obviously you can do like smszack.com or something like that if you're going to do a lot bigger ones. But honestly, it's up to what you want to do. On top of that too, you can kind of do that JVing method we talked about before. And then you can also just find people that locked up deals and they need help, right? Oh no, like what do you do? It flips people out. And the last one, you just kind of do what we do, you know, direct mail. I love direct mail too, but obviously reverse strong for dollars, direct mail, I can send direct mail pieces. That's not going to be the main way to get deals when you're doing virtual wholesaling real estate. And so the next part here is the acquisitions portion, right? This is when we go out here, we close sellers out here and, you know, we, we got to do it virtually, right? And so we talked about in wholesaling real estate, we are doing virtual wholesaling, right? We have to shift our marketing a little, right? We got, we got to, we got to change a little. When we do our acquisitions, we sort of have to change it a little bit too. The fundamentals of wholesaling is the same, but we got to change it just a tad, right? Yeah. So let's talk about vir virtual acquisitions now. You can see where my son gets his handwriting from. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> you have to think on acquisitions, the, the one differentiator is you're not physically with them. So I'm here to tell you if you're brand new and you want to do virtual, I'm just going to go through some basics. So no, number one, let's just establish some basic rules. Because we are using the phone. That is our power vehicle. So you're going to use the 80-20 rule. Uh, if you don't know, go over to freeholesling.com. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You need to use it accordingly. The better you can listen, the more intel you're going to get from your sellers. And it's easier to gather that intel to structure a deal. If you constantly dominate the conversation and you don't hear your sellers out, you're never going to be even be able to qualify. So if you know you're a big talker, this is hard. You have to talk 20% of the time and not 80. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can't gather intel and you can't listen to people if your mouth is always running. You have to understand. So if you're a big talker, you're going to have to adapt. I had to adapt when I did this. It took a huge shift in my mind and you have to do it. Now, for those of you that don't talk, this should be like really easy. Now, the 20% has to be very targeted qualifying questions. And I'm going to get deep into that. So before we get into it, and then the other one is ego. You just got to lose it, man. Yeah. Your ego is your, your, your self-image of yourself and it always has to be right. And trying to always be right is not going to get you anywhere in wholesaling. Honestly, it's going to tear you apart. So you want your sellers to always feel right. That's your job. And remember, this is not a sales job, guys. All you are is taking action. You're going through your list and now you're getting them on the phone and understanding your disadvantages. You can't physically see them. Now, why is it an advantage to see somebody in person? I can see their eye contact. I can see their posture. I can see the house. I can see a lot of stuff. So you really have to be hyper tuned in on the phone. Now, before you get into it, if you're brand new, here's what I want you to understand. We're now talking about talking to sellers. If you don't practice, it's going to be painful. Talking about practice? <laughs> talking about practice. Who was yeah. that? Uh, Iverson. Iverson. <laughs> you have to practice. I, I, I can do the, the, the Kobe and Jordan story all day long. Like nobody's an overnight sensation. How do you practice? Number one, start with a mirror. Move over to your family, friends. And then step it up. Just go over to Zillow Fisbo. I don't even care if you don't have an intention of buying the house. Just start to have at least a couple hundred conversations. Why? Because you're going to hear every objection. You're going to screw up. And that's the time to screw up. Not when you have these really hot lists and go, Oh my God, what would I do with a probate? I don't know what to do. So just get the awkwardness out of the way. So now that we have it out of the way, now you're ready to graduate, which Zach talked about early on your lists. Earned. That's where I'd love you to start. So now we're talking about the phone. We're talking about acquisitions. Your job is to connect with the rapport, which is to find commonality and then turn them into conversations. This is the big secret. So since you can only do it on the phone, it's important you are dialed into what you're saying. So if you practice, 
you're going to sound a lot smoother. If you don't practice, it's going to be rough. And here's another challenge for you. I mean, Zach, do these lives at least three times a week. Jump on here. I'll do a role play with you. Because four you, times with all the channels. Four times. You just, you have to practice. A lot of you are like, well, I'm inexperienced. I go, I don't care. How much did you practice? And nine times out of 10, well, I'm, I'm starting now. I do. I'm the last guy you want to practice with is you've got to go through and you've got to get the experience in doing it. Now, I want you to understand this. Well, let, let's get into uh, some of the, the really key differences. So mm. here's the keys for virtual wholesaling on ACK. Number one, ACK, acquisitions. Acquisitions. I'm, I'm <laughs> you're too, trying to, you're I'm trying to, hip. you're trying to make a new uh, thing. So you have to qualify. Okay. You guys understand in wholesaling, you're going to disqualify more than you qualify. That's just it. Talk to 10 people. Nine are probably going to kick you to the curb. You're fine with that. Well, Rick, how do I qualify them? Well, first thing you go to freewholesaling.com. I'm going to go into depth with you because I don't have time to do everything here. But you're basically going to learn MCTP. So motivation, condition, time frame, and price. And remember, price is not really a qualifier. It just helps you qualify. It actually is a disqualifier, in my opinion, if it's like a crazy mm. price. But remember, I don't care what price they shoot out. I'm looking for motivated sellers. So if you know you're qualifying for motivated sellers, please, guys, only work with motivated sellers because as much as you think you can spend five hours with a retail seller, you're not getting anywhere. Volume does not help with retail sellers. I'm going to repeat it. Volume is not going to help you with retail sellers. If you are spending tens and hundreds of hours with people that aren't motivated, you are going to drive yourself nuts. Yeah. So you got to find motivated sellers. So once we go through and we find motivation, hey, I need to get the house sold. It's got deferred maintenance. And guys, remember your lists are automatically targeting these people anyways. Unless you downloaded an MLS list or you went on and just did FISBOs with no qualifications, you are going to find motivation in there. So remember, we talked about the quality list. Now, once you have quality, you can churn up volume. Here's the key. You come to an agreement and they say, listen, um, well, can you come over in person? Biggest objection you have on it. What do you say to these people, guys? Tell me in the comments because I want to know because this is the biggest objection you're going to get in virtually. And honestly, I struggled with this when I first did it. I'm like, I thought I had to get on a plane and go look at every property. You okay. don't. And say, listen, here's what I'd like to do. If we can come to an agreement on price and you're comfortable with the contract, is we are going to have an agreement over the phone. And once we have an agreement, so I don't waste your time and my time, then I'm going to come out, have someone take a look at the property. And that way we know we have a deal. But without that upfront agreement, I can't come out and look at the house. So let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. You're going to have to use this strategy unless you want to get on and spend thousands of dollars on plane tickets and eat up weeks of your time. It works. And why not? Why wouldn't they want to have an agreement upfront with you? and you have an agreement up front with them, that way all you have to do is get through a simple inspection. That's simply how I say it to all of them. You're going to have to overcome the objections, the biggest one. Then you're going to come down to signing a contract. And this is where most of you drop the ball. You get so excited that they've verbally agreed with you. You're like, oh my God, what do I do? And here's what a lot of you do. You just send over the contract and go, hey, Mr. Seller, could you sign that and get it back to me? No, 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 no. You no. can't. You've put all this effort in. You've, you've researched markets. You've paid for list. You've cold called. You've skipped trace. You've got an agreement. You've sorted through all the people. You that got them to you agree up. to a price. That's 90% of the battle. You're, you're at the final pivot. You're on the two and a half yard line. You're going for a two point conversion here. Okay. Stay on the phone yes till signed there's two reasons for that number one it's annoying it's like okay i, I want to get this guy off the phone but the only way i get him off the phone is to sign i'm just going to sign it the issue guys I, I want you to understand when it comes to the well, the reason why we say this is because you have to understand that sellers they're not motivated sellers because they're the most proactive people in the world right mm -hmm. they got some problems and 
but the thing is, a lot of them maybe they they all they 100% procrastinated on deferred maintenance on the property, right? Yep. I'll fix it up later. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to say, "I'm going to sign that agreement later." Eh, it, I'm a little busy right now. Uh, my kid's got a soccer game. I, I'll, I'll do it later. Yeah. And they're like, mm, so the I don't know if I want to sign it right now. The only way to truly get to the accountable part is you just got to walk them through it and just listen. I, I can't get off the phone until you do this because yeah. I think you're going to forget about it. You got a lot going on. And for me to get this process going, let's just go ahead and get your autograph. We'll move on. I just need to get your okay. Avoid the word signature. Um, contract, contract, use autograph, go to freeholdfunding.com. Yeah. We teach all the words right to avoid, there. but, um, guys, you put in all this work in virtual marketing. Uh, most of you are li missing that last, these last two things, basically how to overcome the objection to come in person and then actually walking to them through physically signing the contract. And if you'll do this, your closing and conversion rate will go way up, but you cannot just trust a motivated teller because how many times do I tell you? Your job is to help the motivated seller get out of their own way. Mm. Most, here's just the truth. I'm going to give you a truth bomb here. Most motivated tellers are in a position because they just made a rash, short decision and they keep freaking out and they don't want to make another bad decision. Although they have to sell the house because they can't afford and they can't do the maintenance. And you know, they're going to eventually have to sell the house. So help the seller get out of their own way and always go back. So when they freak out, you always bring back people to the center. Go, listen, Judy, the reason you contacted me because you said you can't handle another day in this house. You can't handle the stress and the bills and you want a clean start. You want to get that money. You want to go see your sister. By signing this agreement, by doing this over the phone, I can go ahead and start that process and we can start that beautiful vision in your head. Are you with me? Great. Click that button and just incentivize them. Just And I keep selling the dream on where they're going to be. Remember, I'm not selling them. I'm just selling them on a vision of giving them peace of mind. If you've ever, listen, guys, I've been a motivated seller a few times in my life. It happens. It happens to everybody. And I want you to understand that the reason they're in this position, because they constantly delay every decision. That's why the house is in such bad shape. So you have to fix that part. Um, on the last one, I want you to understand this is the big one. Everyone says, well, Rick, I, I lack experience. Oh, I get that so much. Okay. Or I'm too young. Oh, oh, yeah. So this was one of Zach's, like his mental blocks when he first started. I said, Zach, like, I'm just like, look, and I go, so you're talking to like a 53-year-old man here. I'm just telling you guys, I would do anything to jump back into like a time machine to get into your age and start this at the age we're talking about. So you have to look at it. Yes, you are inexperienced. You have a plan to get the experience. How do you get experience? You talk to a lot of sellers. You start by practicing, switching over to Zillow Fizbo's, and then switching over to your earn list and your paid list. So what? I don't, the only person that believes you lack experience is you. Because if you're in this to truly help people and make win-win situations, and you're not going to lie to people, remember, if you ever have a question, me and Zach are here, you're going to have a title company. You're going to have an, we teach you how to have an entire support team. I tell you never to lie to people. And if you don't have an answer, go get it. But here's the key guys, whatever you lack in experience and age, there is one factor that overcomes all that. You ready? It's flat out enthusiasm. Mm. And enthusiasm is really just a code word for attitude. And I'm talking about a great attitude. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been in business a long time in real estate. I have other businesses too. If someone's terribly inexperienced, nobody's thrilled like to do it. But if they have confidence and they are a joy to be around and they make the experience pleasant, I will always give them a shot. And your sellers are no different. I can't tell you how many times I started. It goes, I don't know if you know what you're doing, Rick, but I really love your attitude. And it looks like you really want to help me out. So if you can do what you say you're going to do, I want to do a deal with you. And more times than often when I was teaching Zach the business, same thing. I'm like, Zach, all you do is got to win them over. Mm -hmm. And how many times did you get pounded on your age? A lot. But honestly, all I have to all I tell them what, what your line is. That every single time. I, I didn't come up with it, but it's like, okay, Mr. Seller, they're like, oh, you're way too young. You're super young. 
Yeah. Is my age, if I have the money to buy a property for cash, is my age going to affect me buying your house right now? If I have the money right now, is my age going to affect it? No, that's it. Yeah. Guys, I, I tell a lot of people, you know, not a lot of people understand that Alexander the Great was 21, 22 years old when he ruled Northern Macedonia as the emperor and then conquered pretty much the, the known world, all of Persia, Babylon, uh, literally Egypt. You know, th there's a reason why he did that. Do you, do you think at 22, he let his age stop him from conquering pretty much? The there's a reason why we know about him. All right. Do, do we know about, you know, Philip II, his dad? Not a lot of people know about his dad, but you don't really know many kings uh, from his time. But we all pretty much know Alexander the Great. Uh, pretty much everyone, you know, he was 22. You think he left his age, let his age stop him? No way, right? Uh, who is it? Uh, Joan the Ark, 17? Yeah. We still know about Joan the Ark. Does anybody else know about the Hundred Years' War or the Rose War? Uh, back in those, no one knows, but everyone still knows about Joan the Ark. And she was 17. She commanded an uh, army in France, right? She was pretty cool. But like, we know about them. What, did they say, I'm too young to do this? I, I know they, they took it. They, they all had one thing, though. I'll tell you this. They all had confidence. And that's the key that nobody ever talks about. It's all about confidence. It, it's insane. So, guys, if, if you're young, if you're 16, 17, I don't care. Numbers just an age, really. It, it's really how you project yourself and how you care for others. And if anyone ever tells you you're too young, Honestly, it's a compliment because you got more time to grow and improve than most other people. And you got to look at your youth as an asset. And the minute it goes off your mind, like, wow, I'm thinking like this. I want to help people out. And I'm this young. Imagine when I get to Zach's age or I get to Rick's age, it's going to be unbelievable. Youth is amazing. The more enlightened you are, the younger you become at it, the more things that you can truly do to help your family out, to help sellers out. And I'm here to tell you, don't get insulted because a lot of you, you're like, oh my God, they're going to tell me I'm too young. It's not. It's an asset. Use it. And whatever you lack in experience, if you can make it up with a great attitude, I can't tell you how many times I go to business. I get people that have no idea what they're doing, but if they have a great attitude, I always give them leniency and I give them the benefit of the doubt. Once they got a nasty attitude, it's a whole different ball game. And I want you to understand that you are in absolute control of your attitude, how you show up every day, how you look at everything. Either you look at it as a lesson or a problem. If you look at everything as a problem, you're never going to avoid problems. You go hide in a cave, you're going to have a problem. The cave's going to leak. It's going to be dark. It's going to be cold. You're going to have a house. You got mortgage. You got utilities. You got snowstorms. You got hurricanes. It's just on how you view it. So, guys, whatever you lack in experience, just like make it up in enthusiasm. And I agree. It will overcome a lot of these obstacles. 100%. And so, the one thing I think a lot of people have to practice is that objection to virtual wholesaling. So it's like, oh, can you just come by and see the house? Or when are you going to come by and yep. see the house? Remember, practice this line. Hey, I'd love to go see the house, but the way our company works is we get the agreement done first so we don't waste your time or my time, and then we'll go out and look at the property. That is it, right? So yep. remember, guys, yes, we are. someone's going to go by the house, the, the boots on the ground, right? But we have to get the agreement done first so we don't waste each other's time. That is it, all right? And so the last part is dispositions, all right? It's get, getting the deal done, right? The, the first thing we got to under, understand about this boat is what we call our boots on the ground. These are the people that are going to pretty much take pics of the house, output videos too, and so we can go sell it to the cash buyer, right? We got to get pictures on the house. We got to confirm the condition of the property, right? So either you can do it a freeway or a paid way, right? There's a freeway. And there's a paid way for it, right? Because everyone's like, oh, yeah, I got no money. Okay, fine. Freeway, you can JV or can I have your cash buyer do it. I hate to tell you, but that's pretty much, oh, what if I get a realtor's going to steal your deal? A realtor's going to want money. They're, they're part of the cash buyer portion. So if you want to boots on the ground, you, want, you don't want to pay any money, JV it with somebody or find a cash buyer. Oh, but I got no money. I don't want to give half the deal. It's like, which one do you want? You got to choose one. And then paid, obviously... I'd say about 50 bucks, you can get a uh, BPO, right? So B there's BPO agents that actually do it. They take pictures of BPOs. That's a good one too. And then on top of that too, you can kind of spend somebody on Facebook to go take pictures in a video of a property. Or a photographer is a little too expensive for like a hundred. Photographer is like a hundred bucks. Not worth it for me. Yeah, it'd be but more than that. Honestly, it's not 
don't make the property look too good. And you kind of don't want that too. I think a lot of people don't understand this. When you take pictures of a house, you don't want to make it look better than it really is. Like you want the cash buyer to confirm it and not be shocked at something, right? And so when it comes to selling the deal, you know, just positioning the property, finding the cash buyers virtually, it all comes down. This is pretty simple, but like, ca oops, cash buyers, right? So cash buyers on the dispo side, pretty simple. There, there are three main ways to find it. I'll call it four if you really want to get into it. But cash buyers are going to want to flip. Oh my goodness. Either cash buyers only want to do two things. They either want to flip it for a profit or they want to rent it out. That is it. There's no which way with cash buyers. I mean, they're, the only other type of cash buyer I know are ones that will try to live in the house or maybe buy it and then hold it for like land banking. That's one, that's 1% 1 at most, right? Mm -hmm. I've sold some, uh, I'll tell you this, a quick story for virtual wholesaling deal. And I just, I think it's a really important one. I've sold deals to people that actually live in the property and they paid the most for it, right? And yeah. So one example, I had this property I locked up. It was in this huge HOA community. And it was insane. It was this kind of like a half, not a condo, but it was kind of like a townhouse type vibe. And I locked it up for 115000 And I sold it for 140000 All my cash buyers wanted to buy it for one twenty five, But I sold it for one forty. You know why? Because I found some, I found an end buyer who paid the most, like a realtor. How do I find this person? Did I list it on Zillow? No. I guys, when you're doing dispo, do not list the property on Zillow like you actually own it. You don't own the house. You're brokering real estate at that point, and that is not good. Okay, don't act like a realtor. You know, I, I get people who do novations, listen on the market that don't do that either. What I did was I went on the Facebook group for the community. There's probably like. 2000 homes in that community, mm -hmm. huge. And all I did is I joined the Facebook group and I said, I have a property that I'm about to flip or I'm going to flip, but I might just want to do another project. Does anybody here want to buy a, a property that needs a little bit of work for cash? Yeah. Guess what happened? Flooded. Oh, my son needs to buy a house or my son's a realtor. You know, half of them are realtors trying to get me listed, but I found a rich guy that lived in the neighborhood that wanted his son to live there too. Mm -hmm. And he was going to renovate the property. So the, the, the rich dad, not rich dad, but he had some money. He bought it for cash, renovated it, sold it to his son for an FHA loan. Yeah. That's actually not a terrible thing. Right. Yeah. And he got a good discount and I sold it for way higher than a cash buyer. Yeah. And it worked like that. So if you want to find end buyers, stuff like that works, but they're rare properties. Okay. Yeah. For 99% of them out here, though, I'll let you know, it's a flip or rent situation. Now, if you're getting in a community, I do recommend you, you go try that. Be careful, though, right? Because neighbors do talk. But it was a big enough community where it worked. So that's that one little tip for you. You know, gurus never talk about that. But they're either going to want to flip it or rent it out. So if I want to find a landlord that's going to buy the property, fix it up, and then rent it out, where, where do the landlords hang out, right? That They list the property for rent. Right, that's all we're going to do. So we're just going to go number one to the four rents. All right, that can be on Zillow, Cold War Banker, Realtors, whatever it is. But call them, and the the landlord should be on there. Uh, the landlord should have their info. If you go to freelancing.com, I have recorded calls of me talking to cash buyers that are basically landlord buyers. Number two, we can cold call the actual cash sales. This is the list that you get at listrei.com. Handwriting's terrible today. All right, whatever. Brutal. Uh, <laughs> but these are a list of people that are buy houses for cash. It's literally a list of people that have bought houses for cash in the past like month. You're going to call them up. Hey, I saw you buy this house for cash. Are you looking to buy any more for cash? That's it. I like to do the zip code of the deal we got, mm -hmm. but it's pretty simple. Cash sales, you call them up, right? Number three here, this is a big one, but these are actually title companies. If you have a good wholesaling title company that does a lot of wholesaling transactions, Ask if you can get connected to the cash buyers. Half of them will say no. Half of them will say yes. It's a great deal. I, I've so how many deals have we sold through our title company it's, yeah, of like guys, a deal that's kind of like tight. It's it's crazy. It's, it's huge. Listen, they know everybody. They know people who've fallen out of contracts, and they know who can close quickly. 
they know how much money they have. They know the type of properties they want. And really the title company just wants the business. I would offer to buy lunch or do something special for that title company because man, when you're in a pinch and like somebody falls out of contract and you need a replacement, honestly, title company is probably your best one to close quickly on a deal, like on a huge time crunch. We, but we, we go crazy. Like, I mean, we, for holidays and birthdays, we get gift baskets and all those things. Cause yeah. we're, but here's the thing. Let me tell you, I know it's easy for me to say it because when I, go to a title co our own title company say, Hey, do you got any new buyers for this? Mm -hmm. We make them so much stinking money that they're okay. Like that, yeah. that, you know, they want to help us out. So it's a little tougher for you starting out. I, I completely get it, but they still, they're going to want to help you out. You just got to build relationships with them because hey. it just, you can't just don't be that type of person. So this type of person does it physically and they're the same people who do it um, virtually. I used to run a RIA meeting and we'd always have two or three annoying people. And all they would do is walk in the room, say, give me your card. I need cash buyers. And, he ca and they'd run around the room and everyone would just start like, oh my God, if that's how you want to network, you're going to get killed. It doesn't matter if you do it digitally or in person, because true networking is about providing value first, helping people out, earning their trust, and then having them reciprocate it with you. You can't, if you constantly take from people, they just avoid you. So now we have the, the new age spammers. People join a group. This happens every day. You see it, Zach. They join today. And then two minutes later, give me all your cash buyers. Where are my this, cash buyers at? Where my I'll cash skip buyers? trace. I'll do it. People are doing it in the comments right here. I'll, I'll skip trace. I'll do it. Providing absolute zero value. They just want to take. And like when I get that, I'm done with you. I don't want to deal with people like that because your mentality stinks. I agree. And so the next part here are property auctions. Okay. Guys, there's property auctions, there's tax auctions, there's government auctions, there's private auctions. Yeah, there's all these auctions. List. Guys, when you have an auction, okay, I want you guys to understand. And, you know, there's, here's the property, right? Nice little house. <laughs> God. Whatever. Okay. And there's like all these people right here, okay? And they're all bidding on one property. Do we bid on the property, Zach? No. And then look, I'm red, Never. okay? I'm the wholesaler. I'm inside of there, right? Yeah. Guess what happens? I go and network with all these people before the auction. All right. Like I go talk to all of them, right? We exchange info. I oh, I got a deal here, right? Look at that. I'm, I've infiltrated. And guess what happens? Only this guy won the auction. That means all these other people are super sad. Oh, I didn't win the auction and I got all this money to buy houses. Yeah. Guess what happens? We're going to go send them over. Boom. That's it. It works really well. Here's another thing too. I, I want you to understand this. This is a, this is, this is a dirty trick, but I've done this. Okay. There are actually wholesalers and I will tell you, this is truth. This is, I, I can't believe this is true, but it happens that will get all the cash buyers together on a date and call it an auction. They will auction off their wholesale deal. Okay. Yeah. They have a lockbox. They'll bring 30 cash buyers through and they will, literally auction off with them or they'll bring them all through one walkthrough day, like 30 or 40 of them. Guess what happens? I get on those email lists. I go to them and I pull, I, I steal all the guys cash price. I got, there's one guy uh, in store. He does not like me, yeah. but he did this. I just showed up, networked with everybody, like all of them. And I got his top 40 cash buyers. I get text blast all the time. I, I've never seen a service. I'm like, why are you guys doing it? It's just, Guys, listen, when you mass market and you do not vet and do it, you just get guys like me and Zach on your list. And I teach you guys this, this reverse marketing strategy to find markets and find cash buyers. They do all the work for you. These are people's egos that are just way too big. Now, it sounds perfect in theory. To, like I just call everybody out the property at once. The reality of wholesaling, it's, it just doesn't work. And honestly, you wind up pissing off a lot of people and you wind up you're really playing realtor when you do that. Cause now you're selling the house. You're not selling the contract anymore and you're going to have a problem down the road with it. So take advantage of what other wholesalers go out there and do it. It's, I just think it's, it's funny. I really, to me, it's reckless and that's how you try to sell real estate without a license. And that's what draws so much criticism to our business. And that's it. And that's exactly it. So that's how you get virtual wholesaling real estate deal in under two weeks. Now, uh, you told me how to do this like a seminar. So this is going to be our sell at the end. Okay. Oh yeah. For, for 
we're going to give you a, a free $997 bonus thing here. Okay. If you buy at the end of this, okay. What it is, is we're going to show you how to do social media deals. Okay. It's the last part. These are going to be deals. All right. On face on virtual wholesaling that you get on Facebook groups and Craigslist. And guess what? what what's some good buzzwords I can sell on this? I mean, the, oh, the, the, AI. I can tell you AI to do it. Oh, yeah. uh, automation, all this stuff. And all you got to do is pay right now at freewholesaling.com. And I will literally show you for virtual wholesaling how to get inbound leads coming to you like that. And guess what? This is a strategy Rick's used since 2003. Yeah. And so I used AI back then. I just, uh, not, no, with your head. Clean with if you it. go to freewholesaling.com right now, I will show you exactly how to do it. It's our special little bonus uh, for you. But I, I, I'm joking, guys. But I'm not joking about social media deals. They're real. And you can you can do very, very well with it. So, guys, it's insane. So, if you're looking out here to get your first deal virtual wholesaling, this is it. I, guys, I've spilled the beans. There's nothing I don't think I left. You and I, we didn't I leave one stone on turn. Like, I just gave it to you. You, you got the entire course. It's transparent. And you go over to freewholesaling.com. And you can look at it for yourself. So it's, I just love it. I wish more people in the industry would just be transparent and earn people's trust up front. Um, it'd be a lot better business, um, but it's my opinion. That's it. So what I'm going to do right now is let's answer some questions. Let's do some one-on-ones uh, with the people backstage. I uh, remember they're all going to whole thing else is for real. And uh, let's do it. So uh, let's answer a couple of questions out here and uh, get it. we got Jason. Jason said, just got off the phone. Uh, with a motivated seller, she wants to sell for just the payoff amount. The house comes with squatters. How do you handle squatters? Uh, well, the squatters, um, they have their own set of rules and they're usually not financially motivated because they're blocking it. So I honestly, you go straight to a lawyer. You, you can't mess around with it. And by the way, if you try to negotiate them with them, it just gets worse. So they're not your typical tenant that stays over. Um, so you, you just, you got to use a lawyer and work with the confine of the law. And here's the deal though. If you're buying a house with squatter, you better be getting a deep, deep, deep discount because they can trash the house. They do create problems, but if you're getting a great deal on it, it might be worth it. So, um, we've, we've gone, um, even with squatters where we had to camp people in front of the house to keep an eye on it, to run security detail. Um, now, I will tell you, there are tricks with squatters. So most squatters don't like any type of law enforcement showing up. Um, so sometimes that original call, if there's a legitimate complaint there, you know, like late night parties or some wild stuff going on, but definitely consult a lawyer and find out what your remedies are within your state laws and work with them. Don't go wild cowboy stuff because it just makes it worse. Exactly. Just, I mean, you just got to get a good But you're solving it. a huge problem by taking on a property with a squatter. That's it. Um, Olivia says, if a seller needs more time on the contract, am I be able to extend it? Of course. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got to get permission from the seller, but uh, it's highly negotiable. Yes. Holly says, thank you so much for your advice. We're calling. We're talking to people and we got an appointment scheduled. It's been a month. Awesome. Love to see that. Uh, congrats on there. And then Jason. Uh, so the seller has the shut, water shut off, hoping that it make the move out. You got to be careful with that. Uh, she's 70, lives 105 miles away, and doesn't know what to do, honestly. You get painted for horse from the problems you solve, right? So yeah, Jason, you, this is a great one. You got to get a uh, a big discount, and you know it can take sometimes six months to a year to get a squatter out legally, and you guys got to hope they don't trash the property. Yeah. So Jason did a $72,000 probate deal. We just recorded a podcast. Yeah. We're going to release that soon. It's going to be an amazing one. So Everybody's going to be bugging Jason now. Oh, I can't wait. All right. And so Jason, let's... just say, go over to freewholesaling.com. They taught it to me for free. It's not complicated. Exactly. So let's do some one-on-ones. Let's talk to the people. So if you want to hop on the one-on-ones, go here to Wholesaling Houses for Real, where you learn wholesaling real estate and how to do it for real. Click the Featured. Click right here, the StreamYard link. And then, boom, you'll be on here to talk to us absolutely for free one-on-one -on -one, and we can help you out. So uh, first thing, first person we got, we got, Oh, just walked away. He'll be back. Hustlers don't stop. They keep going. There he there is. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> what's up guys? Yo, what's up? What's going on? Uh, Malik, my name Malik Muhammad. Um, I just had a quick question. I got to kind of hurry up because I got to go to work. 
But I pulled the arrest records for my county, and um, they uh, want me to pay like $100. Um, and I'm just kind of wondering, because uh, I asked for quite a bit of information after I looked at it, because I did the little Google chat GPT thing and just copy paste. Um, but I'm trying to see, is it worth, should I pay $100 for that list? And then if you could tell me like what exact information on that list do I need? I mean... I, mean, I don't know if it'd be worth a hundred bucks because it's, it, it's, it's not, it's a list of all the people I got arrested for the past week or month. Shouldn't be that difficult. They do. It's just a name and a charge, right? And why would they charge you a hundred dollars since you pay for law enforcement with your tax dollars? It makes, yeah, no, it makes sense. no sense. Right. Okay. Got you. I, I would, I, I would literally ask that question. I go, listen, I just, it's just an open ended question. Like you, police departments are funded through, um, city and state budget so it's like i'm not you have the right to know who's being arrested in in your city or county yeah um and they already have a record on it so yeah I, don't, I don't pay 100 bucks it's not worth it and honestly you you could find like i don't know man like we we get most of that stuff for free so yeah. it's like that's the first i've ever heard of someone charging it it sounds exactly it sounds a little crazy okay. don't pay that yeah, I won't. I was just wanted to double check. I also um, had went down and pulled a probate list, um, but it doesn't. I think I do. I need to go back down there and look through the the books in order to find the PR, because all I have is case style and case number. Well, did you go there and ask? Um, I did. I went there and got the. I got the physical copies, but I did think to ask. Um, ask. Yeah, you just gotta ask. Yeah, man. I oh, gotta, per that's pertinent information because that's yeah. the person you're trying to get a hold of. You're gonna have to go back and just right. ask. So Be just annoying, ask. man. Yeah, it works. I got you. Nice annoying. Um. Sure. So so yeah, I'm calling. So I did the three. I think three one one right now. So. I work from 3.30 to 12. Um, I go to sleep. Uh, I get home around 12.30, and I go to sleep around 1 at the latest, like 1.30. And I'm getting up around 7, 8. And I'm doing the 3, 1, 1. I just need to really get my volume up. Um, uh, I really need to get my volume up. And that's why I kind of just been trying to focus on how, how do I get these lists and, and how do I, you know, you can just drive for dollars, man. Yeah. I, that's what I need to do too on the weekends. So I'm going to start implementing in the morning that. too. reverse drawing for dollars in the morning. Okay. In the morning. That's it, man. Okay. I got you. Um, I think that's it. Um, I did also try the, I tried to pull the, Cold violations. I got some cold violations. Um, and I was going through that today. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of uh like dollar generals, like really commercial property. So I'm going through that. Um, but I don't see like what type of what type of um violation violation it is. Call and ask. Just call and ask. Okay. That's and it, man. You just got to sort through it. And you only got to do it once. And once you figure it out, you can decide which ones you need to attack. Okay. I got you. So it's nice to meet y'all. Y'all see me soon. So I appreciate <laughs> it. Got to go to work. Okay. Bye, see you, bud. Thanks, Thanks bro. Awesome. So we got Dimitri. Hello. Hi. Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear. All right. All right. Um. So... I'll tell you a little bit about it. So I've been cold calling for seven weeks. I recently got a dialer a couple weeks ago, batch. And I'm 17. So, you know, Zach's like a big influence to me. So I've been following Zach for a little bit. And I've dialed about 8,000 um, dials in the past three weeks. It's still nothing. And I've pulled uh, code violations, probates, um, water shutoffs, all of it. Okay, let's talk about this. So, eight thousand dollars. What's your contact rate? Um, contact. Let me pull batch up real quick. 
y'all know I'm an ass this stuff, right? <laughs> y'all gotta get ready for it. Um, contact rate is nine percent. What's your skip tracing? Skip tracing is I do it through batch. So let me check. Okay. So I like skip trace, skip trace through batch, and then just push it over. Um, skip trace rate is ninety four percent. Pretty good. So are they all code violations? Where are the other eight thousand? No. So let me go. So there's code violations, um, foreclosures, water shutoffs, probates, uh, high equity vacants, um, tax utility liens, and then tax utility. So I'm in Oregon. Um, i'm in salem okay and then so i've been doing salem is like the county marion county and then portland i'm sure you guys know portland so i've been doing both cities kind of but yeah it's like two different lists so i'll pull like a utility lien from salem and then a utility lien from portland okay so let's see here i assume you live in that area yeah i live in salem Got it. so your median home price is below above the four hundred thousand. Yeah, it's four fifty around. So that's probably going to be one thing that's not going to be helping you out too well. Yeah. On top of that, too, of the eight thousand you called, how many of these were government lists you actually had to pull yourself, and which ones did you just pull? So the ones I pulled myself were um, the foreclosures, the water shut off, the code how violations. Many? Um, so code violations, there was 208. No, like, like how many government lists and how many paid lists did you get? Let's let's split that off into two. So the only paid list I have was the prop stream through prop stream, and then it's the tax utility ones and the high equity vacant. How many? Like uh leads total or how many lists? Okay, you did eight thousand calls. Out of the uh -huh. eight thousand calls, how many were paid and how many were government lists? I think about um a thousand leads were around were paid so not total dials but so a thousand did, leads so you had seven thousand government lists you pulled around there probably yeah that's a lot uh, no like so numbers. that seventh that eight thousand is eight thousand dials total that's not for each contact okay let's let's talk about lists all okay. right how many total lists did, out of that eight thousand came from the so total calls? contacts total contacts no, you're no. saying or lists all right so you lists. made eight thousand okay. calls yeah yeah those calls came from what a thousand leads 2,000 uh, leads? How many leads in total? Um, I think around 2,000 leads. 2,000 leads. And you're saying 1,000 were from government lists? Yeah, yeah. Half of those were from government lists. Okay. And then the other half were from PropStream. Okay. First of all, foreclosures suck. They're, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. I've never yeah. I've never called that list. Okay. I, I've said it a million times. Please mm -hmm. don't call that list. It's a terrible list to call. Mm -hmm. On top of that, too, minus off the foreclosures, how many government leads do you have from there then? Minus off the foreclosures. So let me see. So code violations 208, um, water shut off. 208. Let's see. What's water shut off? Sorry, it's just on my computer real quick. Um, so water shut off is around 200. Um, and then how many I also, were foreclosures? Just how many were the foreclosures? Foreclosures I got from only from Salem, and there was only like 50, I think. Okay. So you're telling me you cold called that list four times? What list? The foreclosures? 2,000 leads or 8,000 calls. So you called. No, there's that. like multiple numbers for each lead. Oh, okay. Dials. Okay. So yeah, about the dials. dials. Right. Honestly, man. Switch the market up was what I was thinking because or I heard uh, Rick say no, um, or say that bad. like a yeah. video, like uh, a, yeah, like Oregon's not ago. the best man. It, it, here's the here's the reality: is the, the higher the price points get, the more sophisticated the sellers get, and, and the more sophisticated the sellers like to use real estate agents. They don't just cut and run. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying there's no deals in your area. Yeah, your your, your prices are getting up there. And once you get past like that 400 number, honestly, in a perfect world, I'd push it like 250 or below because it's just a different mm -hmm. mentality of people. Um, I'm not saying you're never going to do a deal in your market. Yeah, it's, just, it's like tougher. You're, you're kind of primed for staying attuned to your local market and then adding a virtual market 
And I'm going to tell you this, you, you got to understand this is how long have you been doing this for? Seven weeks, you said? Yeah, around seven weeks. Just me and my buddy from uh, school, we decided to wholesale, try it out, see where it takes us. But yeah, I'm hey, like, so, I'm really getting into it. So, so just, just repeat what you just said there. Me and my buddy. Are going to do what? Get into wholesaling. And you used the or, word try. You, you got you to fix your vocabulary, man. Okay. Like, and, so I'm just telling you how wholesaling works. Mm -hmm. You can't. You know, you've heard about like these cold dunk tanks that are like like 45 degrees, 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. you, you get the concept, right? Like that's yeah. not pleasant for anyone, right? Mm -hmm. You got a choice. You can either dip two toes in it and try it or you just go, dude, I'm going in. It's going to hurt. But mm -hmm. I know what the benefit is and how I'm going to feel afterwards. But I know it's going to be painful when I dunk in. So mm -hmm. you're not the first guy to miss your market. You're not the first guy to struggle in the first seven weeks. You've got to go, okay, I'm going to learn. So you got an experience. You didn't get a deal. And by the mm -hmm. way, seven weeks is nothing in this business. Mm -hmm. You've got to go like all in. So you know what? The biggest question me and Zach get a lot. You're like, how many calls before I get a deal? Unless I'm God, I can't give you that answer. If you are <laughs> not going to get that answer. So you have to trust in your own process and you have to believe in yourself to do it. It yeah. doesn't mean you can't make shifts. You can make shifts. Mm -hmm. Like what I would do, like I, first of all, I would separate your probates. You do not do mass dialing on probates. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. I've never taught that method. It's a horrible, mm -hmm. horrible way to do it. I right. would take the highest probability areas for your area, Oregon, whatever, Salem, like probates are phenomenal, but you don't need a crazy dialer or do anything like that. And mm -hmm. I would do some driving for dollars and maybe some reverse driving for dollars for the foreclosures. Pre foreclosures. Okay. That's it. And then go find a market that may be in a geographical area that's going to have a decent population that you can get well under the 400 mark and start attacking it like you were initially attacking this list. There are areas in Oregon that are like that too. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. on top of that too, I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but on top of this too, I think because you're such a beginner, you don't yeah. really know what areas are good or bad. Did you yeah. specifically cut off the value of properties on your lists? I like prop, um, for like prop stream. Yeah, for the prop stream one. So my buddy pulled them and he I told him to put the max around for like 440, like the medium okay. range. So on top of that, too, what I'm going to tell you is something that's very unconventional. But mm -hmm. I really think because you're in a higher price market, yeah. you're going to have to when you're in a higher price market, the, the buyers are going to dictate it a lot more, too. And so mm -hmm. what I think you need to do is I, how many buyers do you have right now? Uh, buyers right now haven't been focusing on buyers too much just because I've been really focusing okay. on getting a deal under contract. So I have around like six. So let's do this. I want you to go back to the, to the buyers or, or focus, spend a weekend trying to find as many buyers as you can or yeah. the most high quality ones that buy the most deals. Uh, any buyer that says they bought more than five wholesaling deals. Okay. I, I think you're kind of all over the board here. And l so let's just do a clean slate. All right. <laughs> you're, you're pulling all these type of leads. You're trying to call as much. You're doing the volume. The quality is okay. Yeah. Why don't we just do this? Why don't you ask the top buyers where they're looking to buy and what they're looking to buy? Mm -hmm. And then you attack in like a micro thing of those little markets. And then you go after it, right? Maybe your buyers want to buy $600,000 properties. Maybe they want to buy these type of houses. Go ask the buyers where they're looking to buy and what they're looking to buy. And the one thing you might find is some buyers want to buy in this specific city you haven't heard of that's 45 minutes away mm -hmm. that actually might be your new great market. You got, I think mm -hmm. you got to talk to some buyers, man. Okay. And they're going to tell you, I'm looking for three twos or two twos or whatever they're called. And then you drive for dollars, you reverse drive for dollars, and you cold call the government list on there. Okay. Cold calling is a great game, man. You're actually gaining skills by doing it. But mm -hmm. I think reverse drawing for dollars is probably be a better use of your time. Okay. And so go find the buyers first, man. And then attack what they're saying. All right. All right. Thank you guys. You got you're, it, man. You're doing good, man. Like yeah, I'm telling you, you sound good too. You're you're doing better than 95% of the beginners out here. I, I want yeah. you to understand yeah. that. And just, yeah, I'm you, just you really gotta keep to going. It. You gotta yeah. keep going. Don't let it stop you because it's you're just trying to find your direction and your way. And mm -hmm. this is somewhat of a normal process. Listen, if I thought it was a perfect backyard market for you and the prices were low and populations high, I'd tell you to jump all over it. But I'm not yeah. saying get out of it. But customize your list for your local market. That way you don't spend all your energy there. When it pops up, you can make a ton of money. And then you can find a virtual market. And it might be a 75 to 100 mile radius. Sometimes you don't have to go that far. 
Yeah. But use Zach's advice on getting intel from the cash buyers yeah. because they might just go, hey, you know, you know this town over here, and you go, hey, I know of it. Now you can do your research and figure it yeah. out. You obviously, I don't think you're the expert in Portland and Salem for you know real estate investing. No, and no, no. you don't have the market research, but why don't you get the market research from cash buyers and buying for decades and decades? Mm -hmm. Steal their knowledge dues for you, man. I'm okay. telling you, that's what I think you should do right now. If you, you need should help, just like getting those buyers off like prop stream, skip trace them, call them up and then just ask them. Cash sales, flippers are great and the four rents. Okay. Even okay. look at like Rhea's in your area. Okay. All right, man. All right. Thank you it. guys. Facebook, back group too, bro. Facebook group. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Okay. All right. Later. Thanks, man. Oh, that was great. And last really quick, we got Jonas. Long time no see. What is up? Yeah, what's up, guys? Hey, Jonas. Uh, yeah, uh, I got a deal on the contract and a buyer uh, that wants to buy it for more. Um, okay. <laughs> but, Talk about uh, the king of virtual here. <laughs> he is very virtual. Awesome, man. What's up? All right. I like it. Yeah, uh, but they want to, uh, you know, it's a realtor that has a buyer, you know. Uh, mm. Uh, and it's a national private equity company, uh, so they can. Uh, she said that they can only use use their closing attorney, uh, and mm -hmm. I know that you guys don't like that, right? Yes, but this is in Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, does the realtor know your? They know you're wholesaling it, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, if that's going to be a deal breaker, you might have to go with your attorney. I don't like that, but. Mm -hmm. If you kind of don't have a choice to get the deal done, if they know you're yeah. wholesaling, you might have to. It's an attorney, so it's slightly different, right? Yeah. So, uh, Jonas, let me ask you: Do you do you have a uh, a title company you prefer to use in Georgia? It's in Georgia, it's an attorney state. I know, but I've, uh, do you have any connections there in Georgia? Uh, yeah, um, I got a a good. Uh... Closing attorney. Uh, he, so, he was recognized. Okay, so one of the things you can do that this is an off the beat technique. Uh, there's a technique called a courtesy closing yeah. where you basically have your title company oversee the closing and the documents. Mm -hmm. They usually get a, a, you know, a little bit of a fee, but they kind of babysit it for you and make sure they follow like your way to do it. Now, some title companies don't like to be babysat, yeah. but if you want peace of mind, ask her, can you help me out with a courtesy closing? And then what they do is, the docs get sent to them. They review them for you, and then they disseminate them from there. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit messier in an attorney state, but um, if I don't trust the title company, that's how I oversee it. Okay, and that's how I do it. And usually, they charge that company will charge between two and three hundred dollars to do that service for you. But it keeps everybody in line, and nobody can play games with you. And because you're a little bit inexperienced, that might be a, a way to do it. So the correct terminology for anybody on the live. It's called a courtesy closing. And basically that title company communicates everything to your title company. And then they have to okay it before it all goes out. That way, you know, you're by, you're playing by your sets of rules. That's how I would try to do it. But okay. if you don't have any other buyers, sometimes you got to reach to get deals done. But are you doing it via assignment? Yeah. 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 So if every, as long as the attorney knows what you're doing, he's okay with it. That's fine. You can make a decision if you want to do the courtesy closing. That will keep them honest for you. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Okay. All right. Let us know, All man. Right. Awesome, man. All right. Boom. That's it, right? That's amazing. Guys, when you go out here and you start talking to sellers and you start putting the work consistently, work, like deals just flow in, right? It's shocking. That's the key to consistently becoming successful, consistently getting deals. Go out here and get consistent deals. Guys, Virtual wholesaling is not as complicated as it seems. It's about the marketing, volume, and the quality, right? And sometimes, you know, quality comes down to the right areas in wholesaling too. You, you might think you have the best list, but if it's in an area that sucks, that's terrible quality. Now, there's a lot of like nuances, but if you just get in front of sellers, that is it. If you just get in front of people that need to sell the property and you ask if they're looking to sell it, you'll do well, right? Virtual wholesaling in under two weeks, completely you can get a deal. You don't have to pump up a lot of volume. You have to do very well and you're going to have to work your butt off, but it is possible. And remember, if you can't even get a deal in two weeks, it, you're not the worst wholesaler in the world, right? It's the person that quits. You're not a loser in wholesaling unless you quit. Yep. That's it. So don't quit. Don't give up and go after it. So guys, 
This is Zach Ken signing out. Rick Ken signing out. Our next live stream is going to be on my channel, Sunday Night, the Zach Ken YouTube channel. And then Monday at 5 p.m. is going to be the Rick Ken YouTube channel. And uh, that's pretty much it. We got some awesome videos dropping uh, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. We got some cool uh, replays we got yeah. on there. And uh, that's it, guys. And so, guys, uh, FYI, on Saturday, Sundays now on the Flip of Dirk YouTube channel, we, um, I ha we pay our editors to go edit out these live streams, make the audio better, make the visuals look better. We're going to upload them 4K. Uh, we're going to cut all the fluff out of it. So, like, an hour of us talking about a topic can be condensed into like 30 minutes and that's insane. Right. And so that's nuts. It, it, it's crazy, but it, it's pretty expensive to do, but you know, I think it's worth it for you guys. And then you guys remember Zach and YouTube channel release content, the Rick again, YouTube channel, and then obviously wholesaling else real YouTube channel. So guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, go to freelancing.com and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. See you guys. Bye.